Hello fans, my name is Ekwanaba and I'm having a conversation with Joshua Maponga today on religion. Has religion helped Africa? Why are pastors enjoying on earth? Why members are suffering on earth? We are all going to heaven. Okay, so is there heaven or not? A lot of questions are going to be asked to Joshua Maponga. Just stick and stay. You can share, like and comment. Hello, Ebusiafo. So, Pacifica Asura Chow Dofo Dye, and they're not for who could do with unique laser whitening. Unique laser whitening. I will toothpaste to strong kwa. What did you choose? And ma will see a year fita. Na a year fita non suno. Na a ye and cow bunny beer a woe no mu beer. Any tea stain, coffee stain, smoking stain, si beer. Unique laser whitening product. A beginning in every swam or kama kama kama. The other one is a utuso. Na udi be a goo. O brush it so. Na udi a chicho sinisunina kama. Uvia and who were num general were num sa into for a unique laser whitening. I was zero seven nine 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 seven nine two three three zero. Unique laser whitening or say muni sesso. Penny for se be blow ya sent in ye da ni atupnu nane papa ni funti and was so more bumbo here nane papa mudi pro technologies and a make for my wo ane pro technologies we are specialized in both sales and installation of CCTV cameras yet on SI install CCTV cameras in the saw gun and now sabrochi now if you gun now pursue a CCTV camera installation we need pro technologies and then saw so we use CCTV camera installation electric fence automated gates access control video door Bell and our intercom and our satellite TV home theater so we pay and our water and our person install them out pro technologies and our software and our shining so see if you didn't know from America but you may be said papa now pedia man you know none of us would that form make sure you know the web which memo and your branch and we're gonna you need more bravo bring into sick of fire and some safe and yet you're probably more gonna or that Na niye tene se, yesa ya general construction. So we brochure, na wapeso usi fi organa. E da yu plan ibiya wapeso usi. Se wa sha asidada, anafe na wapeso usi. Plank beer, ye be see em out, and no it's so yeah solar power, and now bamba wants and send the idea. When you and insa was queer first to install it, and none is certain, ye be ye at the amount. Ewa Ghana, Uber Huy, when Miro Fradenta, Edward Yancha Dodua, Uber Huy, Ewa Ashi, Yene Emalin Pharmacy, and what the same building for information or what's up? 401-7570-300 and a plus 401-6992254. Pro Technologies, we have the solutions for your skills. And home entertainment needs at affordable prices. Declared that churches were non essentials. Mm -hmm. said, How can we be non essentials? Then I was hosting programs at Sankofa, which included now the indigenous medicine in medicines, okay. cultural leaders, and stuff like that. So I started you know, all along in my, in my ministry when I was young. I used to speak about the cultural people. I used to speak about culture. I used to speak about indigenous healers and all this. And, you know, you know, typical Christian, yeah. typical Christianity, where you, you 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 are brought up, you know, not to look at something that was different and don't look at it honestly. Mm -hmm. And and now now during the times of COVID, the vaccination issues, medication issues, the hydroxide issues, mm -hmm. and then I I started hearing traditional people say we have a solution for COVID. Ah yeah, what is the solution? These herbs you steam, these herbs you drink. This. Then I brought those people to my show. Oh. Then I started learning about him. Now I started learning about you know how our traditional people used to do, and I started actually. It was like a wake up call. Okay. Because you can take those gum tree leaves right now, mm -hmm. and uh, put them in, in in alcohol, or or boil them in water, and then you boil the water out. What remains there, mix it with a bit of Vaseline. And then get medication. You have your, you have your fix. So all along, all along you think that these things are evil because you can see the leaves. But actually what you are using on the other hand is exactly what is coming out of this. And now you go into research of chemistry. You find that actually they are removing more of these indigenous mm -hmm. organic medicines. and they are doing. So as I, was beginning, as I was beginning to temper and asking those questions, mm -hmm. many people felt like I, I was losing it. As a, as a pastor, mm. and uh, I was seen standing with uh, traditional healers. And, and oh, so okay. So, so currently, you you are a pastor. 
I'm no longer working in that space. I'm okay. a spiritual person, basically. Okay. I, okay. I, I'm, I've gone past the... You've gone past that. I've gone okay. past that stage. So I, I, I felt many Christians were feeling like using the title of bishop. Yeah, I, that's why I asked uh, I bishop was bringing because you're using the title yes. bishop now. And yes. then I was using the, the title mm -hmm. inappropriately mm -hmm. because I was not representing the Christian church. Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in, so mm -hmm. I said, oh, br br brothers, I am bigger okay. than the title. Mm -hmm. So please take this title. Away. Away from me. If you want to deal with me? Deal with me. I'm a Pongo Joshua. Okay. But the fact that I'm calling myself myself doesn't mean that I've forgotten any theology. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, modern society. So, so if somebody is listening to you now, mm -hmm. the person will be like, okay, so are you a Christian? And, and maybe that's exactly what I'm trying to say. We always try to classify each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if you cannot classify you, then it's like there's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's no problem. When you give birth to a child, what career are they? What are they? Are they a bishop? Are they a mechanic? What, what are they? You only become other things. But when you become a doctor, do you stop becoming a child? No. So uh, what I am, I am still. Whatever I've learned and I've gathered is things that I've gathered along the way, but doesn't take away from who I am. So for those who want to deal with me, take that title, put it aside. But those who still love me as a bishop and are happy to have me minister to them as a bishop, I still go ahead and do some services for them. Okay, somebody is a Christian. Uh, who is a Christian? You can't be a Christian because even when you are sitting Botang, you you can't be you can't be Maponga. Mm -hmm. So you can never become what you are not. You can never be a Christian. You can't be a Christian. How do you become a Christian? So there's no Christian on okay, earth. Okay, okay, let's try. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just let's wanna... try. Let's try. Okay, be, let's try. Be let's Maponga. Try. No, I cannot be Maponga. So how do you become a Christian? They are the followers. Okay, I'll give you a, I'll, gi I'll give you a recipe. Mm -hmm. Lift up your hand. Mm -hmm. My name is now Joshua Mapunga. Okay. Yeah, say it after me. My name is now Joshua Mapunga. Are you Joshua Mapunga? No. So, so this whole idea of Christianity, stand up in front of a church, I, I know this, I believe this, mm. I have this, so I am now this. Oh, 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 okay. But <laughs> are you that? <laughs> when you say you are now a Christian, do you become a Jew? No. Do you become Hebrew? Do, do, you, do you become an Israelite? Do, 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 does your DNA change? Nothing changes. To become that. So you still are remaining what you are. And if God, the one that Christianity is talking about, has a problem with an African, mm -hmm. then maybe God never created the Africans. Because why must being a Christian remove you from being an African? So before Jesus and God accepts you, you must first of all become like a white man. You must eat like a white man. You must dress up like a white man. You must sing like a white man. Oh, then God says, welcome my child. You mm. are now in the kingdom. If you come there like a Ghanaian, you come there like a Zulu, you come there like a Kosa. Like a traditional one. They you, will be like. No, no, you can't. You, you can't. You can't. God, God, God does not like this. Mm. Jesus does not like this. Did you go to school with Jesus? Why do you tell me Jesus does not like it? Did he tell you he does not like it? So this God that Christianity is talking about, it's not the God who created the Africans. It is the God who is understood by the white people. And he's being imposed on the African. That this God, the Christianity is talking about, can only accept you. Only when you come through mm. the culture of the one who is bringing the religion to you. So it, is, it cannot be right. That I bring Christianity to you as a Ghanaian man, and the first thing I do is to force you to become a Shona man. I force you to become a, 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 a Zimbabwean. So, because if you don't become Zimbabwean, you, then, cannot, be, 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 you cannot even use your name. You can't even use Botang. You must be, be, become Takudzwa. You must become Kumirai. Now you begin to understand the history of Catholicism. Why our names were being changed to become Roman names. I'm Francis. I'm Joshua. I'm John. I'm James. I'm James. And even those names are not Hebrew names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are Italian, Greek, British names. The whole Bible has been colonized by the white people. Because even Adam and Eve, Abraham and Joseph and Jacob, those names are nowhere to be found in Israel. You lived in Israel. Yeah. So tell me on the street you meet Peter and John. No, never. Who is in? Give me five names in Israel. Uh, <laughs> like names of real Israel, real people. Moshe. There you go. Um, Avram. Oh. Um, this guy was called mm. Ben Ben uh, mm. Ben Luke Ben Yehud. Mm. Uh, Yehuda. Yehuda. Yeah. So so when you look, when you read through the Bible. What kind of arrogance will the colonial system have that you even change the names, even the name of God itself, the name of Yahweh? 
and you give him your white name, he's God. <laughs> what is God? So Christianity was colonized. Even God, sorry to say that. He is colonized in the Bible. Even God? Yes, because he's not, he's not being mentioned in the name that is his name. <sighs> the one who is bringing the bread is asking you to eat the bread and the plastic. No, 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 no. I don't eat the plastic. I only want the contents. So the branding of Christianity, branding of religion, comes to us in white packages. And we're being forced to eat like whites, drink like whites, take medicines like white people, Dress like celebrate that. holidays like white people. Christmas. Christians hang trees in December, in Africa, in the heat. And then they say it is cold <laughs> because it's winter in Europe. Christmas bunny eggs and Easter eggs. Where, tell me in the Bible, do you find rabbits and eggs? But that is the mischief. Jesus is supposed to be born in December. Which December? But in Israel, December is very cold. <laughs> who takes sheep? Who takes sheep to go and eat in the bush in December? In December. You lived in Israel. Mm -hmm. No, would they go there April, May, June, July, August, September, towards the end? And but their, their first, their first uh, month of the year is, in, I think, it's in April in Israel. April. Yeah. But in Africa, of course, it's September. But that's when the sun comes to the right up to the south to the peak of, uh, and then it starts going back on the equinoxes and stuff like that. Yeah. But so you get your time is colonized, your dressing is colonized, your fashion is colonized, your medicine is colonized, your education is colonized, and then you're given a book that is even colonized itself. And then people say you must become a Christian. Then I ask, no, 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 no. I'm more educated than that. I want the real thing. I'm tired of this plastic European educational system. Then I'm told well, you've become a pagan. You've become a heathen. You've become an antichrist. If an antichrist is me, then all of you must go back and read Isaiah chapter 1 verse, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now, let us reason together. And if Yahweh says, come and let us reason, I'm not leaving my brains behind. I'm going to go there and reason. With your brain. And I'll go and reason. And say, so tell me, who is the God of the Africans? It can't be this one who oppresses us, kills our mothers and fathers and takes them into slavery. The God of the slave and the God of the master can never be the same. So for, based on what you're saying, it means um, uh, Christianity is like a white kind of um, religion brought to Africa. Not a kind of. <laughs> and what makes it worse is that the Ethiopian eunuch was in Africa mm -hmm. before the missionaries came. So if we wanted to talk about true Christianity, then maybe Ethiopia is our place to start. <laughs> not Britain. Not Britain. Not America. But unfortunately, all the headquarters of these churches are in Europe. So we are bound to follow mm -hmm. what the Europeans have been doing. So even colonization is a Christian exercise. I just speak from uh, what you said now. Let's say if I'm dressed like a traditional man to enter into a Christian building called church, mm. everybody's going to be like, who is this? You need to put on some ties. Does, he, does, he, know where does he know where he's going? Where is he coming from? What do, but again, it has taken 400 years, 500 years to be where we are. So I'm grown up now. I forgive people. Because some people say things that they don't even know. They insult you to do certain things that they don't even understand. Because they too were colonized by those that colonized them. And at any opportunity that they have, they will want to colonize me too. And then when I refuse to be colonized, become a pagan. then I become pagan. So maybe that's what I am. Is Christianity a religion? It's a religion. It's Why is it a religion? religion? Because it's a system of conditioning. It's a system of telling people to live in a certain way. It's a system of um, management. It's a system of control, making us conform to government and statutory requirements. But the true Christianity of the Bible is a lifestyle. I and my father are one. one. I am in him. He is in me. I am in you. The kingdom of heaven is now in you. You have become one like me. When, man, we begin to understand these things. Do you need another person coming from somewhere? To tell you. To, and if it is a kingdom, then why are we working with governments? How are we going to go to heaven one day and live with God in a kingdom when you don't like living in kingdoms here? So the order of kings on earth is the order of the kingdom of heaven. 
And if you don't understand the kingdoms of earth, how can you want to go to heaven to live under a king? Because now you are used to democracy. So we're going to go to heaven then and have a toy toy. <laughs> we're going to vote. <laughs> yes. So we, we practice here. Yeah. Whatever you intend to practice on the other side, if we are supposed to use the Christian, the Christian kind of perspective, a religion and the, the way the religion in its own Italian definition simply means to control, to conform, to force, to become like, mm -hmm. and it's an empty little shell because the core of Christianity is living spiritual lives, live the life of a spirit. Romans chapter eight verse one: There is no condemnation for those that are living in the spirit, for we confirm in our hearts that. We are sons and daughters of God, children, heir and co-heirs together with Christ. Let us therefore share in the suffering, then we can share in the glory. For the entire universe is waiting for the sons and daughters of, of, of God to be revealed. And in all these things, I'm convinced we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. Neither depth nor height, nor the things that we are things that are to come, angels or principalities, heights or depths, can separate us from the love. You know, you, know, you look at such passages that when I talk about them, even my, my intestines begin to dance. And I don't think that Christians understand that even issues of baptism, what does it really mean to go back to the water, go back to rebirth? And when an African does the same, he's a devil. Mm -hmm. When Christianity does it, son of God. When a Christian is drinking the blood of Jesus, he's a saint. When this one drinks the blood of a chicken, he's evil. When this one is burning incense, he's a saint. The Catholic... When the traditional person does it, that's a devil. And as a scholar, you stand back and say, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on a bit. Br br bring both here. <laughs> What's the difference? What's the difference? And you go back into the Bible. Then Abraham takes cows and dowries and says to Elias, go and find a wife for my son. And the pale bola right there. God says to Abraham, I want to covenant with you kill the animal, cut it into half, walk between the blood. Eh? And Abraham walks between the blood. God comes in the evening and dances in the blood. There was light that was dancing. And you look at these covenants and say, who understands this culture except the African? Your brother has died. And God says to the brother, go sleep with your brother's wife. And please, let his tribe also not die. And the man peed on the side. And then the Bible says, and God killed him. Now, whoever understands the culture of the Bible, is the owner of the text. You're not hearing me. Whoever understands the, <laughs> the culture of the Bible is the owner of the text. The white man does not know anything about what I'm saying. Nothing. They'll just come and say, it's not, it's not working. It's, it's, who knows about an altar? The whole Bible is full of altars. Altar. He, he erected an altar. He put up an altar. He put up an altar. Does a white man even know what an altar looks like? No. No. But you come back to Africa, tell me, we even know what to put on altars and etc. So those that practice the culture of the text begin to tell us, even in the shadows of many translations, that the culture that the Bible is practicing is found somewhere on the face of the earth. And those that practice that culture Africans. are the owners of the text. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's the copyrights of the book are with the King of London. Mm. So we don't even have copyrights to the plagiarized, <laughs> stolen text, which is now being used to beat us up. If a man beats you on one cheek, give him the other Let cheek. Check. If a man steals, no, forgive forgive those that are hating you. I mean, man, it's okay when a white man is beating you. Can we just turn that verse around? It's me now who must beat the white man. Can he also give me another cheek? No. No, it's the white man only who is allowed to beat the black man. But if the Bible is true, then it applies to all of us. If a man beats on one cheek, give him the other. So now is the time, it's our turn also as Africans to say, if you beat us not once, but 400 years, smacking us up on either cheeks. When I get there, I get too excited. Because the black book says it's only 400 years. After 400 years, I'll return. You to your own people. So 400 years of colonialism is over. It's now time. And if the Bible is true, it is time now that the African must go back to the text and say, the moment of punishment is over. The African must come free. But who preaches like that? Nobody. It's like you are, you are in Israel. You're just being told, let's bow. Bow. Let's pray. Understand. Just say Forgive. Amen. Forgive. Nah. It's like telling an Israeli, like sorry to an yeah. Israeli, like 
Sorry, so what? Are we done? No, we have to continue. It's going straight to the police. They will mm. never forgive you. They don't forgive. <laughs> mm. The Israeli will never forgive you. For what? No, 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 no. This is the meaning of church to you. The definition of the word church, Kirk, circle, it's an ancient German word where occultic people used to walk around in circles and stuff like that. That's an ancient, you can define that. Mm -hmm. So it was like these cults where people are doing that. But by the time come to the Hebrew, they call it Kahal. Kahal means the gathering of the saints for the purposes of worshiping God. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Shona, Bira, it's a gathering of the community to celebrate time and space. That's Isaiah chapter 66. Every season, every the people who come together and worship before me. So uh, church to me is nothing but a building. But the real church, I don't dwell in houses that are built by men. Huh? <laughs> I dwell in houses that I build myself. That's what the text says. So if you ask me what is church, maybe I'm talking to the church. You're right. You. <laughs> and then where do we miss it? Your bodies are the temple <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. Know ye not that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? Yes. So such questions of asking me, what do I think about church? You are a letter that is written. That must be read even by a man that is running out there. When I have met you, I have met the church. <laughs> So church is not a building. The building is just an address. And God does not dwell in a address. building. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this God who dwells in buildings, that's why people are so wicked. You know, because they lock him up in church after Sunday service. The opening. They lock the church and they go home. Bye-bye, God. We'll see you next week sometime during praise and worship. And when they get home, take off their clothes for church. They continue their and lifestyle. And they become normal human beings. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the correct context... Church is not a venue. Church is daily experience. And that is African spirituality. Where, whether we're eating, it's spiritual. If we are drinking, it's spiritual. Whether we're marrying, it's spiritual. If you're entering a forest, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. If you're getting into a river, it's spiritual. it's spiritual. So when child is born, it's spiritual. When the moon sits up there, it's spiritual. spiritual. When the birds sing, a few birds come around your father's house and they start singing. Chua, 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 chua. We, the, the adults are quickly looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> or the chickens are fighting in front of you. Mm -hmm. And your grandmother says, the visitors are coming. So, so it, it, spirituality for me and church stops being, we are at a corner of Bears Node mm -hmm. in, in Cresta. Please be there at six o'clock. No, church is where you are. You know what, what uh, once a Jewish guy said to me, mm. I asked him the same question that, what is church? And this guy told me that if I know that I am the church, mm. then I will feel sympathy for me. I will feel sympathy for my brother mm. because I know he is the church, mm. which means God lives in my brother. Mm. So if I'm offending my brother, I will just know how to do it because I know God lives in him. But at the moment I know that the church is uh, it's like where God lives, then I, I, if I offend my brother, mm. I don't feel any sympathy mm. because I think that is where God lives. But if you know he lives in your brother, mm. you find sympathy. Because when you, when you brother. become the church, then all it means is that you carry the church with you. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the shop, mm -hmm. guess who went to the shop? The church. The church went to the shop. Mm -hmm. When you are meeting your brothers, guess who is meeting the brothers? The church. The church is meeting the brothers. So in other words, you carry, now you understand the Bible says you are carrying the death of Christ mm -hmm. in you. You live constantly to express the fundamentals of you. Hence, people don't even believe in God. People don't believe in the church because the lives which they are living over and above the theology that they are being taught, those two things have never met eyeball to eyeball. Church remains an intellectual, mechanical, address-based God rather than a... And, and read Psalm 82. Know ye not that you are God's. But because you don't know that, you're going to die like common men. Eh? That's deep. So, if I am, if the entire universe is here, then what is there? There's Very nothing deep. there. So stop going to church. Because if there's no church here, there's no church there. You must take your church to church. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Wow. Very deep.
Very deep. Uh, I can go deep. Can I go deeper, man? Go, go deep. Go deep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Then, then, then what? What is saying now? It's like um, so. So far as you don't even know that the church is here, there's no need for you to go to. Don't church. Don't go there. You're going to. You're going to mess up that one. Wow. You, you're going to mess up that one. So you don't go to church. I've stopped going to church. When I go to church, I take my church to the, to church. the church. I take my experience to share with like others. Like now, we are in the church. Right. The biggest church in the world. Biggest church in the world. You know what is the, why it is the biggest? Why? Because I am there and you are there. He's there. And whoever is not here <laughs> is where they are. But this for me is, is communion. And now that's communion. That's communion. Where brothers are now breaking bread together. Yeah. Sharing everything in common, one with another. So church becomes a way of expressing the internal workings of grace with those that are around you. So that you become the lily of the valley mm. in the midst of a sewage tank that is smelling. A lily floats and wherever it is, it is smelling good. <laughs> and then they say, Jesus is the lily of the valley. It means that there is goodness in the midst of rubbish. <laughs> There's beautiful aroma in the midst of a strange smell. So being a Christian, therefore, for me, in its totality, if we had understood it, it's being spiritual. It's wow. carrying the essence of godliness, in you. essence of purity, the essence of understanding, the essence of empathy, the essence of love, caring, patience amongst, within me. So that that which is within me, the victories that God has overcome in my heart, I manifest them when I meet you. Who needs it? Now I get it. <laughs> you understand what no, I'm saying? I get it. So when you anger me, mm -hmm. you anger the church. But you are overcome by forgiveness, mm -hmm. which is an overcome work of grace in me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to retaliate to you mm -hmm. with the same anger because the, the, the heaven that lives in me, the grace that lives in me, overcomes even your anger and your attitude. And I treat you with respect because I'm respected here. Yeah. In other words, I do what I call works of grace. I show you grace where you have messed up. But that's what it is all about. That's Ubuntu at its basics. I am because we are. And when you have a shortfall of grace, I give you that. When you have a shortfall of patience, I give you that. When you have a shortfall of love, I Wi-Fi you, my brother. I'll Bluetooth you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said? Hey, I feel you. like preaching this afternoon. Aye, aye, I feel aye, like aye. preaching, man. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you know what I said to a, a friend of mine? Mm. Um, I told him to stop going to church. And he was like, why must I stop going to church? I said, concentrate on the church you have already. Mm. He said, what am I talking about? I said, you have a church already. Mm. Your wife is there. Mm. Your family, they are in the same house. Mm. You are the church. Mm. Concentrate on that one. He said, no, we, are, we need to go and gather. I said, okay, fine. What happens in coronavirus time? Mm. You were in, indoors. Nobody you were in out. church now. You, you were in the church now. Mm. What if Jesus came? Were you going to heaven or hell? Mm. He said, you are saying something. I say, okay, so now this is the issue. That place you are just going there because you have clothes. That's it, case closed. But if you want to look, look, look at the painful part mm -hmm. where these modern churches, husband and wife are going to church and they're not even talking to each other. Yeah, possible. But immediately get into church. Hello, yeah. brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, tend to your like neighbor. Tend to your neighbor and say, I love you. And uh, everybody smile. And, Hypocrite the, like and the same black book says, if you are driving or you are walking on your way to church and you remember that you have wronged someone. Go back. Or you owe someone. Stop on your tracks. Leave the sheep where it is. Go back. Look for forgiveness. Make things right where you're coming from. And I bet you the passage does not finish and come back because you have really gone to church. <laughs> That's the church. Because the, the church is about you again showing acts of grace. To the church. To the church. No, you, you, you need to remember that you don't have an appointment with God in the church. Mm -hmm. God is waiting for you with your enemies. <laughs> mm -hmm. God is waiting for you with your debtors. That's the Luke chapter 10, the Good Samaritan story where the priest gets there and sees a man that is injured. He passes by. And says, no, no, he didn't pass by. He was rushing to church. Ah, okay. Okay. And he thought that he was going to be, he, sorry, sorry, I can't help my brother. I have an appointment with God in, in church. In the church, okay. And he paces to run to church. The Levite comes back and says, oh, if my bishop cannot help you, I'm the choir master. 
I'm going to church. He's going to preach. Now, if I stop to help you, there will be no one to conduct music. <laughs> he, he, he follows. And the good Samaritan comes and stops. Now, there church begins. Attends to the man. Through church. Carries the man. And he gets off his donkey. And puts another man who is sick on his donkey. And he walks. And the sick person is behind. Now, those are acts of church. And he takes him to an inn, to a hotel. And he pays for a stranger that he did not know. And looks after that man for the whole night. Now, I want us maybe just to play because I'm an artist. Let's just go backwards. Mm -hmm. So in the evening, when these three people are sitting down, Mr. Priest, sit over there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Levi, sit here. Good Samaritan sits there. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Who amongst you took the church to the people? Who went to church? The church is not ready. Let me not waste your time, young man. The church is not ready for the truth of the Bible. So I've told people, don't waste my time. Asking me, do I believe in the Bible or what? what? Because even you, <laughs> who hold it every week, and beat on it as a music instrument. You don't believe it. Yeah. You don't believe it. You don't believe a word that is in that and book. And you cannot even practice what you preach. So don't come around and ask me, do you still believe in the Bible? Do you still believe in the Bible? Because if I should tell you what the Bible says, I don't think you are ready to listen. I see this as an, um, as an insult. You can only talk to a pastor before you can talk to God. Like It's like, um, let me go to church so my pastor can talk to God, communicate to God on, on my behalf. It's like they are becoming like intermediary between you and God. You mm. cannot speak to God direct mm. unless you go to a church to meet a prophet or a pastor mm. before you can talk to God. Mm. I see this as an insult to me. Mm. I don't know what you can say about this one. It, it, is, um, it is a cooked theology that is very convenient for the pastors because then it gives them exclusive rights over you. Yeah. I met up some young men one day, a pastor actually, you know, on my social page, who says to me, ah, God says this to me. And he's saying stuff about me. I got so mad, I lost my head. And I said, young man, you go and tell that as circumcised gentile, you call God. If he wants me, he has my address. And for all practical purposes, if you and God sit in your private space and you gossip about me, he does not respect me and I don't have to respect him also. Because I've not refused to listen. I don't need you <laughs> to tell me what he wanted to tell me. Tell him about what he wanted to tell me. Mm. If he wants me, you should just find him. I, send, I gave him my address. I said, if next time you are going to talk to him, Give him my address and my phone number. To communicate direct. So when you have this condomized Christianity, where a husband sleeps with a wife next door, but his wife must get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> what? When a husband sleeps next door. With a door. woman next door. Mm -hmm. But he wants his wife to get pregnant. I don't know how that happens. That's the customized Christian. That's the condomized, condomized Christ Christianity. <laughs> That's the condomized Christianity. Where God cannot know. And I'm using the word know in the Hebrew sense. Okay. Where God cannot know the church. But he would rather know someone else and hope that this one will get the experience. I, 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 I cannot say it more graphic than that. If you believe in God and God believes in us, and you cannot sleep with jeans on as a woman and expect to get pregnant. You need to learn how to take off your jeans. And get pregnant. Because prayer does not get answered when you are putting on your jeans. <laughs> there must be a moment where there is Adam knew his wife. Mm -hmm. And if this God is real, then knowing that Job <laughs> is talking about. I'm doing some serious theology. Yeah. And, 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 and I know my Redeemer liveth. I don't hear about him. Even if my flesh can rot with wounds, but I, with my own eyes, I shall see God. I know. He doesn't say I believe. <laughs> I know. No. And that knowledge is personal. 
And once we can get to those moments of personal understanding, and I don't know when this God stopped being personal with us, that he should now begin to talk to somebody else. He must be in Ghana, in Nigeria, and South Africans must run to Nigeria to go and find him there because he's not in South Africa. Mm. Acts chapter 17. Is it not God who created us on the face of the earth and put boundaries where we must live so that every one of us must look for him? Perchance grapple for him like we're in the dark and look for him though he's not far away from any one of us. Hey, man. So there's no Indian man who can come to a Nigerian man. There's no Ghanaian man who can go to a Swazi man mm -hmm. and say, I want, I've brought God. And this concept of God who is hiding in a book, <laughs> a whole omnipotent God who is hiding on page 45 in a small little book. We are looking for God in that. We're going to look for him. He's in a book. Come on. Psalm chapter 18, first book. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmaments thereof. Nature and trees whisper day in and day out. The natural book. And then the law of the Lord is good and etc. That's the written book. So you have two books, which is the natural book and then the written book. But for us to lock him only in the written book and we can't see the beauty of the written text in nature, that are, then we're missing what the essence. Or we're reducing the omnipotence of the divine to our colonial mindsets because in our cultural space we actually understand that the universe speaks to us yeah when when the wind blows in a certain way and it rains in a certain way or the sun gets hot in a certain way grandmothers and uncles sit together in groups of twos and threes and start whispering <laughs> what's happening what's happening hey gentlemen something or a snake a certain type of a snake passes by a yard and they look at each other and say, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Or children are born with, they say certain things. We dream certain things and visions. We understand that the universe, and that, that's another passage, night after night, whispers wisdom to the following day. And in African spirituality, we've been taught even to listen to darkness. That's Genesis 1 verse 0. When God stood in the dark and says, let there be. So we've learned that even the universe speaks. The wind speaks. The trees speak. Even the animals speak. The birds speak to us. So true understanding of the written word of God is not superior to the written word, which is you. The pure DNA of your existence, which remains divine, which responds to everything that is natural, that is around it. And if we can begin to interact with God, not only at an intellectual level, but also at a physical, at an emotional, and at a spiritual level, we may find that the reading of the text is one of the weakest ways of understanding God. Because when you read that text, you're going to find an adulterated text. But when you go into the bush, you find an original text that has not been edited, that has not been translated, <laughs> that has not been bound, the trouble. that has not been sold, <laughs> that is not as is. So nature is the best book that we can be able to read and learn more about who we are and where we are coming from. Male and female cows, male and female trees, male and female birds. And we look around and we come to our own space and say, what does it mean to us? How do we interact with all these elements that are around us? So show me one bull that is a monogamous Show me one bird that is monogamous. Show me one tree that is monogamous. Don't bees move from one tree to another, carrying pollen from one tree to another? And you begin to understand human psychology from a natural space, the entire Eurocentric theology of all these monogamy stories, the, all these uh, medicine stories, all these marriage waffling and lie stories. We, they just fall off the thing because the entire nature, even the whole thing of God being male, Jesus being male, the Holy Spirit being male, does not sound like a gay party. Because at the end of that, it is those three elements that are producing a child. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> now, how do three men sitting in one room end up with a child? But that's for another day. That's not for another day. Let, I, don't, let, I, don't let, think, I don't think people are ready. No, no, they are not yeah. ready. Because if God makes the whole nature male and female, mm -hmm. but when it comes to him, it's all male. 
There's a question for another day. I'll, I'll, I'll pack the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll pack the... I'll, even marriage-wise, if this whole thing of Mary and Joseph was what the Bible had said to be, is it true? That actually... Uh, uh, Joseph had paid Lobola for his wife. And then God, God, God bypasses and sleeps with Joseph's wife. And then God is our example when it comes to marriage. But he sleeps with someone's wife. Why not find your own virgin? A little child in Ghana mm. who just said he doesn't believe in God. Mm. He believes his I mother. And, da, 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 da. Yeah. and then it's now a trending something in Ghana. Mm. And I was like, okay, if this boy says he doesn't believe in God, why are Christians angry about this whole thing? Mm. Is he talking about your God? So what is God? God is just, uh, it's like, what is a man? Then you come, you come back in the evening and say, I met a man. Then I ask you, what man? No, it's a big man. But what man? I was in Joburg, I met a man. Hey, Joburg is more than four, five hundred, six hundred, mm -hmm. a thousand plus. So which one? Different types of, not even men, different types of men. Mm -hmm. They are Chinamen there. Yeah. They are Nigerian men there. They are Filipino men. India. Men. Actually, the whole world is there. Yeah. For you to come back and say you met a man, then you go, he's a white man. Mm -hmm. There's no man. <laughs> they are Portuguese men. Mm -hmm. They are Italian men. What men? Then so no, I met an African. But no, how many Africaners are in South Africa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what until you mention his name? You have said nothing. So to say I believe in God. Which God? It doesn't say anything at all. Because the Indians, the Africans, God simply means I agree that there is something supernatural. Mm. That's it. So when the boy says, I don't believe in God, what I heard him say is that until I identify what I believe in, which are my ancestors, yeah. don't tell me about something that I don't know. So Christians, I believe in God. I believe in God. And I'm saying so just for the sake of being, being audible on your show. But if I would be getting back into my own space, then I might start saying things that people don't understand. So to say I believe in God means nothing. Tell us his name. I'm married to a man. I'm married to a man. Tell us who are you married to. We take it from there. So God is just a name we attribute to the supernatural. But without identity, it totally means nothing. Mm, so so that young man is right. Don't believe in what you don't know. So, And you Christians don't walk around and say, believe in God, believe in God. Tell us his name. Oh, his name is Jesus. Jesus? But Jesus only appeared 800 years ago, 500 years ago on the, on the, on the Italian alphabet. He was not there. The letter J was not in the alphabet. Yeah. So give us his name. Then they start looking around. Oh, he must be Yeshua. He must be Yeshua. But why, why are you telling me to believe in Jesus? <laughs> when in fact what you're talking about is he? Is Yeshua. Why not tell me about the, the, the right name of what I must believe in? But Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So people run around etymological mischief. They run around academic infidelity. And they want to force us to believe in the hogwash of colonial theology. That moment of blackmailing people with ignorance is over. It's over. Can a prophet open a church? Is it even biblical? for a prophet to have a church? Is it even biblical? I still believe that there are good prophets out there, but on the same breath, men of the prophets are no longer prophets, but I would call them prophets, yeah? They are into money. There's no way in the Bible I beg to be corrected. I've read that book 18 times. There's no way in the Bible where any prophet ran a church. Maybe let's start there. It's not biblical. Because there's a prophet, there's a priest, and there's a king. Mm -hmm. A priest is an employee of the system, which is the temple. A king is the political figure. The prophet is the middleman between them. Between the church and the political party. He walks on the thin line, rebuking left and right. Both sides. See the danger when a prophet falls into the religious space. 
How does he condemn the church? Mm-hmm. And how does he condemn the government? You're right. Now when his to... bread <laughs> is being given by the same system that is so, prophets literally are neither friends of the system of the religious system. But according to the Bible, they walked on that edge and all of them were killed by the church. Mm. Their funerals were with the church. So even Jesus, Yeshua, Yaswa, Yahuwah, ends up being butchered by the church. It is the church that took him to Pilate. It is the church that used tithe money to pay Judas. It is the church that paid the soldiers to say, don't say he has been resurrected. It is the church that actually... <laughs> and Pilate as a political figure mm-hmm. what must I do mm-hmm. with this Yeshua he's asking them. he's innocent in mm-hmm. my books he has done nothing wrong and the churchman stood up and says he has said he's God he has blasphemed kill him <laughs> so who killed the, who killed the, church. the Messiah so, so prophets I, I don't even want to waste our time it's not even worth, it's not worth it we can argue in modernity I'm prophet so and so, I'm prophet so and so. No, but your, your yeah. explanation you gave um, sounds very interesting because the prophet is supposed to be on a thin line. He's not supposed to open a church because if you open a church, you cannot rebuke the church. Mm. If you go with the politics, you cannot. So, I mean, I get it. Stay there. So, so, so uh, yeah, I stay there. And I by the way, there. to use a more theological definition, if you become too sweet, they swallow you. If you become too bitter, mm-hmm. poo, they spit you out. A good preacher has learned the habit of staying in the tongue. They can't swallow you. They can't spit you out. <laughs> you stay. That stay. uncomfortable state, that's where the life of a prophet resides. Then I can confirm in my country, Ghana, there's no prophet there because all of them, they They're have a pastors. church. They all have a church and they, they all have a, a political uh, affiliation. So Let's just call them pastors. Yeah. That's fine. There's nothing they, wrong, they, by they the way. They don't want pastors. They no, want, no. They, they want to be called uh, Yeah, but, but we didn't mean you. We are here to correct the issue. Okay. So stop. So we stop. Should, we yeah. should call them pastors. They're just pastors. It's okay also to be a pastor. Okay. Or an evangelist. Or an apostle. According to the Bible. The, the fivefold ministry. So just just fall in line. Don't try to sound special. And I'm, I'm, One morning I'm bishop. The other morning I'm archbishop. The following morning I'm pope. You know. Start off as a deacon. I'm an elder. Now I'm a pastor. I have graduated from pastor. Now I'm... I'm, 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 I'm prophet. Now there's, we haven't heard about arch prophet, but I think they must be coming. Arch prophet. Yeah, it, it, it should be coming very soon. Those that are above the prophet. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Uh, in the system, these pastors are enjoying life on earth, mm. whilst the members are struggling, mm. and they are all going to heaven, same place. No, so, no. So my question is, no, my no. question is, why, why are they? Why are they? Why are the pastors enjoying life? If, if they go to heaven, uh-huh. then the Bible is a lie. So if, if, if the pastors or the Christians go to heaven, then the Bible is a lie. Okay, it's a lie. Ask okay. me why. Why? Luke chapter 10. Back to the Good Samaritan story. When a man wakes up in the morning, he pays for the inn mm-hmm. from his own pocket. Okay. <laughs> and after he finishes paying, he says to the innkeeper, and that's what I want to call pastors, you are not pastors or anything. You are innkeepers. Mm. You are hotel keepers. You are custodians of sick people, people whom grace has picked up on the side of the road, injured and wounded. They are now in your custody to recover. And then the Samaritan says to the innkeeper, my message to every pastor out there, look after this man. I have paid for him. If you incur any other expenses on his account in my absence, I will refund you when I return. Meaning to say, this man owes you nothing. nothing. I will pay you when I come back. But the innkeepers of today are holding us by the throats <laughs> to pay <laughs> for our staying in the inn and according to the word they have received their reward already when the owner who left us here comes back 
they can't claim twice. Otherwise, heaven is a fraud. <laughs> oh, now I get it. Mm. Mm. So what, why are they living rich life whilst the members are really struggling? Because I've seen a lot of church members and then they, are, they even can't afford two meals a day. Two, I mean, but the pastors are driving cars, mansions, the children are in big schools. They are, I, they are really having fun on it. The, the name Jesus is a good brand. Ah, it's a okay. good business. Okay. And uh, even right now, if you can, if I can just put a tent right there and I just start shouting, Jesus, 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 for three, five, six hours, in eight hours, I'll be all over the news in the world. There's a man shouting Jesus there and people will start coming and just putting. People are looking for solutions. Mm. And in the midst of looking for solutions, people will do anything. But war unto the prophets of today, according to Ezekiel chapter 21 and 22, who are feeding themselves, not only feeding themselves, they are even eating the sheep. <laughs> yeah, instead of feeding the sheep. They are eating the sheep. So we, it, it, it has become a good profession. It has become a good brand. Very marketable. High, highly competitive. Good branded. Good music. Good venue. Good money. Those with 1,000 bucks, come forward. Yeah. Those with 500 bucks, come forward. Yeah. You know, to come and see the pastor privately, 25K, new shoes for the pastor, bit of oil over there, breastlet, and what? And the pastor walks around, bodyguards around him and to protect him, but you must put a sticker on your car to protect yourself. You know, <laughs> when you want money, let us pray. When he wants money, That's can it. you come and collect an offering? And it's it's, it's a, maybe without being too sarcastic, but I, I don't think that the, the, even the pastors themselves uh, will be able to stand on the day of judgment. And when the Bible says they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, I think the hottest part of hell belongs to pastors. Gosh, the hottest I'm sorry part to say of that. it. Of hell. Of, of hell. If there is anything called hell, the, the hottest, hottest part, part belongs to the pastors. The pastors. I agree with you. Because some of them, in as much as they talk like they know where heaven is, the powers that they are using to run their churches are not from that heaven. Mm. They're from the underworld. You are from Ghana. I know. You have lived in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, pastors will not allow their members to consult, mm -hmm. but they are consulting. Mm -hmm. They won't allow their members to make money, they're yeah. making money. Mm -hmm. They won't allow their members to work, but yeah. they are working. They won't allow their members to, do, to fast or do anything that will enhance them to become like them. But the members are being used to improve the lives of the pastor. And if God is fair, if born? God is fair, if Why? there is any grain of truth in God, how dare you sit in heaven watch and watch us being abused like this only to tell us that there's a judgment day that is coming. Don't you remember what happened in the Old Testament? Where the children of Eli and what and what were striked by lightning. And what and, Don't you remember Korah and Datan where the world opened up and people were swallowed? Don't, don't, don't. So what has happened to God? Has he become speechless? Has he become weak? Is he, is he, is he? So if there is anything called heaven, I want to promise you, my pastors, repent. I would preach them, Matthew chapter 18, the rich young ruler came to Jesus running. What must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And the man looked at him and he says, go, sell everything that you have. Give to the poor. Come and follow me. And the Bible says, and he walked away sorrowfully because he had much possession. There are pastors right now, if they should read Matthew 18, they cannot even apply it into their own lives. Yet they say they believe in the Bible. Why? Because they have much possession. I'm not even saying take this money and go and give it to the poor. Give it to your members. Yeah. Your own members. They'll give it back to you, by the way. Robin Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. But, but. That's what I'm saying. Then come back and follow. So we have pastors again, as I was saying about members who don't believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We also have pastors who don't believe in the Bible and have taken ministry as a career. And there's a profession. Uh, do you believe or will you agree with me that pastors must pay tax to contribute the national building? Because yes. Because of and how they are making this uh, business lucrative. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. They must pay taxes 
if they are not using the money they are collecting for the purposes that they must be using it. So what are the purposes? Giving to the poor, mm -hmm. empowering the community, mm -hmm. like literally doing the social work. Okay, so if they are not doing that, then the government must come. If I was the government, I would walk up to any pastor and say, can I see your balance sheet? I want to see your expense report. What are you doing with your money? And if I find that you've bought a house, you've bought six cars, you've sent your children to school, and all your budget is around the great eye. And then you want to tell me once in, in a blue moon that I, okay, I put a crash there where you're putting like a hundred dollar and you're making hundred thousand. It's unjustifiable. But tell me that you have spent 60, 80% on, on the community and for the 40%, 20% has been for the maintenance of the church and the 10% or 20% has been for sustaining me. It's understandable. It's understandable. But you cannot tell me some churches it's 100%. The well, pastor's okay. account is the church's account. Business account of the church belongs to the, the checkbook of the church. It's his church. It's his checkbook. And then you say they must not pay tax? No. They are just like any other citizen doing business then the government must come and collect from that part and do for the pastor what he's failing to do mm -hmm. that is I'm, I'm in, i look without mentioning names in nigeria there are pastors there who have two jets one jet three Gosh. and my last time i checked actually some pastors actually it was saying the pastors in nigeria if we put all of them together they actually have the budget the same with the government you are right so it means that the pastors right now must be responsible for roads, for hospitals, for infrastructure development. Because they are collecting that money from the community. And the community needs those services so to come to, to church. So they need to provide them. I need a road to come to your church to give you money. Mm -hmm. And as a pastor, you fly in with your helicopter and you park there and you preach and you go back. And then we struggle in the dust. We are sick here. We need now a hospital. So the pastor himself must use the same money that he has collected and make services available to the people that are giving him the money. That's what a government must do. And in this case, where pastors are equal to the government, the pastors must be doing what the government is failing to do. Because they have the money, free Thank of you. charge, Thank nothing. You. No tax, nothing. I can't say it better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and that all that money is tax-free. Yeah, yeah, tax-free, yes, yes, yes. Nothing, they don't pay anything, yeah. Yeah, tax-free. Tax-free, you're right, you're right. Because I, I know Jesus did not pay tight. Mm. He rather pay tax, mm. so I'm confused why Christians are paying uh, tight instead of tax. Tithe is circumcision of greed. Tithe is healthy if it is if it is understood how it must work. Tithe is returning some of the blessings the Lord has given you to the system that is looking after you spiritually. I'm starting from what it must be. Okay. <laughs> Before I come to what it is not. Okay. Tithe is uh, uh, cutting off of the foreskin mm -hmm. of all of it is mine to say that's share. So that the tool that has been circumcised, it is able to impregnate and produce after its kind. Mm -hmm. So the money that has not been tithe is not good for investment. On another day, I'll come and do proper theology on tithing. Okay. But on the same breath, tithe, you don't tithe a seed. You tithe the profit after planting it. You don't tithe the seed, mm. you tithe the profit of the seed. So if I give you a seed right now, mm -hmm. you can't tithe it. Why? Then you've killed it. Okay. Yeah. I give you a seed. I give you a mango seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tithing it will mean cutting it. Mm -hmm. And then share half, half. Then mm -hmm. what do you remain with many? Nothing. What even what you have is not, not is useless. Tithing is taking the seed, finding fertile ground, planting it. It grows. When we harvest from the seed, then we share. Your salary is a seed. Invest it. The profit from your investment, that's what you can share. So if I give you a cow right now, you can't tithe it until the fourth or fifth year when it has reproduced one, two. On the third year, this one is starting. And the following year, this one and this one and this one are starting. Ah, so tightening is not supposed to be done every month. 
I'm I'm taking you through a lesson. Yeah, I know. So that you, so the money that you okay. receive, if mm-hmm. you go to the bank and ask for a loan, mm-hmm. you can't tithe on a loan. You take the loan to the business that you say you must do. Okay. Only after you've made profit, profit. from that business, then you take your tithe. Otherwise, you're already eating the profits. <laughs> Mm-hmm. From the initial investment, and okay. when you pay back to the bank, you won't be able to balance the, balance your books. Okay. So we don't pay tithe on loans, we don't pay tithe on grants, we don't pay tithe on salaries. Okay. We pay tithe only on the profits of our investments. Mm. And if we take that model, then we develop a self-sustainable church where every member is a business person, and God is not interested. Yafe is not interested in. Money coming from poor people. Corinthians says he loves a cheerful giver. But right now when our members are tithing, they are not cheerful. Because that money they need it badly for their school fees. Their things are not balancing. Because their businesses are not doing well. But tell me after you have fourth or fifth year, where now you have 11 cows. From the first cow that you received. And you call your pastor and say, please, here are the 11 cows. Count. Pick one for the Lord. That's a cheerful giver. <laughs> I don't know if that's making sense to you. Yeah. yeah. So this whole thing of converting tithe as money is wrong. Tithe is given as an agricultural tool in an agricultural environment of the Bible where it's not only tithe of money, it is grain, it is seed, it is wine, it is the harvest of the field. And so tithe is not one item. Mm-hmm. You bring all the things that you have harvested. Okay. And then you tithe of this. And in some certain cases, in the Bible, it says, if you are too far from the temple, you can enjoy it, yeah. Take your tithe, call your neighbors, and eat it. Your tithe is supposed to be food, not some money. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you enjoying that? But collect your neighbors. Let's enjoy. And, and eat it. Again, that's church. Where yeah. you are... You, <laughs> we're back to church. Yeah. You, you, we're back to church again where the community around you can share with you and enjoy the blessings. And tell me that when you're eating with your neighbors, you're angry. Very happy. So, so I, I'm sad to say the more than 21st century model of tithing has been a highly commercialized, monetized uh, tithing, which is, and it's coming in the backdrop of people that are landless, people that no longer know how to do agriculture, people that don't, ap- don't appreciate even the environment of the text itself. It has just become a way of collecting money from people every week. Even those that are not working, those that have not invested, tithe must not. And even the Bible says, don't bring me tithe from a dog, from a cell of a dog, or a tithe from a prostitute. So, th- so there's some tithes that are totally unacceptable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're going go and sell a dog and say, I, 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 I sold 10 dogs. <laughs> and the, and the, the, some of it belongs to the no 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 no. There are some types of offerings <laughs> that are needed that, that are not acceptable. I asked a pastor about this titan and I was like, okay, so uh, Abraham met uh, Melchizedek, and then um, he gave his tent to Melchizedek. Mm. Okay, now I asked the pastor, are you Melchizedek? And he was like, why am I? I said, Melchizedek has no end, has no beginning. What are you? you have end, you have beginning. You are not Melchizedek. That's one. <laughs> Number two, after Abraham... You're being naughty, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after Abraham gave uh, the, the tent to Melchizedek, mm. so are you trying to tell me that Abraham never met Melchizedek again? That was not written in the Bible. Mm. So it means he just paid once and that's it. So why the, are you taking the, it the, every time? The Melchizedek one is very interesting. And I wish maybe for those who are following your podcast... And uh, I'm picking up one or two. Mm-hmm. You know, no, I, I know the comments that are becoming. Yeah, some some of the things he's saying are right. Some of them are wrong. Or it's fine. You are growing up. Watch this video today. Come back again another six months and watch it again. Come another five years as you are growing spiritually. You understand. And your understanding gets clearer and clearer. I hope before people die, we'll actually be able to come back and say, "Finally, I get it." Let's go to Melchizedek. Okay. Abraham goes to war. His brother has been taken captive lot by 10 kings shipped and Abraham hears it now I want you to understand Abraham which your pastors have never told you Abraham was not a play fly by night guy he had soldiers in his own house full army so he marshaled his own army in his own house set up to go and liberate his brother fought the 10 kings 
won the battle, collected the spoils, cattle, sheep, and goats, and took his brother and went back. It was while the army general, Abraham, the Abraham you never hear about. We always think of him holding a knife to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. You never saw the military side of Abraham. So when he was sitting in his tent, coming from war, and this is complicated, and put it on record, this is the first time tithe appears in the Bible. Abraham taught God tithe. He taught God tithe. Mm. Adam and Eve, up to the time of Abraham, no tithe. So Abraham is sitting in his tent, relaxing, coming from war, tired. And then Melchizedek passes by. And Abraham says, come in to my house. To which the Bible is gentle, it says, and Melchizedek ministered to him and broke bread with him. Now, you must be a theologian to understand that this was a priest from the city of Salem. Salem, which is a root word for Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. As a priest... If you are ministering to a man, it meant washing his feet. We are back in the tradition. It meant cleansing Abraham of the aura of military and war from where he was coming. Abraham's hands were dirty. Abraham's hands had blood because he had killed people where he was coming. So by ministering to Abraham, it will mean a full cleansing. I'm back to Africa again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he cleanses Abraham. But for, you to, for the more vegetarian theologians, it simply means he washed his feet, broke bread with him, and drank wine with him, and anointed him to make him normal again. After he had ministered to him, Melchizedek is walking away. Abraham says, thank you very much, Melchizedek, for the ministry that you've given me. On your way out, please collect a tenth of everything that I have plundered. <laughs> Tithe came out willingly of Abraham having been ministered to. Now, this one will shock you. There's no pastor who deserves to eat your tithe unless he has touched your feet. Unless he's touched your feet? And washed your feet. And broken bread with you. And anoints you. And blesses you. It's out of the goodness of your heart. You That's say to your pastor on your way out. <laughs> Please count a tenth of what I have plundered. And bless yourself. Now, now you begin to see a new side of me which people don't like to hear. <laughs> because I have read this thing with intention. Therefore you minister first. Watch the then gra gratitude from your members is what you receive. You don't coerce members and preach to them and condemn them and make them feel guilty over their money because you want to collect a tithe from them. Damn you, pastor. Go to their homes. Clean their feet. Bury their dead. Minister to them. Anoint them in hospitals when they are sick. Do ministry and don't ask for it. On your way out, they will do it. Let their hearts be moved with compassion from what you did. That they should say, Pastor, on your way out, please. Take My wife is at the door, please, but he will sign you a check out there. Now, there is a blessing that comes to you. This whole thing of before every service, uh, we shall now do the offertory. Someone must come. You have robbed me in tithes and offerings. Every one of you. And, and people must be condemned to feel guilty. And that, that pastor has never put his foot in your house. Does not even know the problem that you are going through. And he wants to get tithe from you. And that's the first time we see tithe coming out in the Bible. So if I wanted to be naughty, I'll say if you want really to pay tithe, you must go to war first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember I remember I asked I asked uh, this pastor that uh, Abraham went to war. Which war have you, you been to? Have you been to war? <laughs> I remember I asked no, him. No, but uh, at, a light, at a lighter note, mm. if, if war means employment, if okay. war means what, whatever it is, the pastor must come back mm -hmm. and, 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 and cleanse his member. Yeah. The, the priest 
must attend to the needs, the spiritual needs of Abraham. Yeah. And uh, the beautiful part about that passage, which is the, the, the law of first instance, it's out of the gratitude of Abraham that the word tithe comes in okay. for the first time. Okay. So God never taught tithe. It's Abraham who mentions it from his own heart. Mm. And going forward, it becomes a principle that, that we must follows. return tithe. Be thankful. That's what it means. <laughs> I think those paying tithe should just listen to what uh, you can cut uh, this. You can cut uh, this part on tithe. Yeah, on its own. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll just paste it for them. Yeah, so in, that in, they in know what is going on. Listen very carefully and slowly, and make your own conclusions. Be grateful. That's why Paul says, "God loves a cheerful, a cheerful giver." Let it come out of the of gratitude. Why is it that Christians, uh, when you question their belief system, they get angry? Like, if you want to know why, I mean, asking them questions, you want to know more, then they, they are like, you are a pagan. Why are you doing this? You know, they, they, they put you in a corner that they, they feel like you want to attack the whole Christianity. They don't want to be answered. They mm. don't want to be questioned. It's in one way or two. The first way could be ignorance. That when someone is asking something that you don't know, there's a line of defense. Mm. other people if you ask me what I don't know I'll stop and ask so, so what it is like because I'm positive in terms of learning I don't know everything so I'll stop and learn but others who are more arrogant in their ignorance they think that being questioned is being challenged as if them and God are the same age as if when I'm asking them about Jesus they must stand to defend Jesus mm -hmm. they must stand to defend God even if they don't know him, they they feel that it is there. It is there. That, that's the war in Palestine right now and in Israel. Yeah, where the the these ones are saying we're defending Allah, these ones are saying we're defending Yahweh, and so Allah and Yahweh are at war. But one, then what are you fighting as human beings? If this is a war of gods, then why are you killing each other mm -hmm. over your belief systems? So Christians are bigoted, just like Muslims. Mm. Just like, I've not seen that same violence from Buddhists, to be frank. I've not seen that same arrogance from Africans. Yeah. Where a village would take up spears no. to go to the next village. Never. Because you don't believe in uh, Onyame Kwame. Yeah. <laughs> you, you believe in Ogun. You know, so we're going to kill those who believe in Ogun. No, never. No, we've never heard of crusaders in, in Africa where tribes would butcher each other over religion. Yes, we killed each other over land. Or, or over murder, you kill one of us and then we are revenging and stuff like that. Over women, you know, you, yeah. who, who is, or, or, but, but not. Uh, uh, I'm maybe, worshiping this, you don't worship it, so I'm coming for you. Each house has its own idol, each house has its own belief systems. And there's no house that has gone to a neighbor's house with spears to go and say, You must believe in ours. But Christianity comes around with this superiority idea mm. that Jesus is superior to. And Muhammad is superior to, and God Yahweh is superior to, and superior to. And if we believe that whoever the creator of the universe is, is one, why are you fighting? Why are human beings fighting over hmm. who is superior? When the one who is superior, if he has created you superior and you are a Muslim, and if he has created you and you're superior and you are a Christian, and we look at each other and say, Oh, Allah did a good job. And you look at me and says, Oh, Yahweh did, did a good, a job. good job. Doesn't it look nice? In the, but no. no. You must become Christian. You, you must become Muslim. <laughs> you, you can't be. You, and so this, this, this religion has created enmity amongst us instead of creating unity amongst us. Religion divides us. Spirituality unites us. The one who just served you water now. Mm. I just want to add it to what I was asking. Mm. Is born Muslim. Mm. I was born Christian. There you go. So he has been friends with me from childhood to date. Mm. He we even go to church together. Mm. So I ask a pastor that, what if you were born a Muslim? Mm. Because I was born into Christian mm. community. So I became a Christian. He was born into the Muslim community. Mm. He became a Muslim. Mm. And then now he's with me. 
<laughs> you understand? So, Christianity is like um, where you are born is where you belong. You are even being more, you are being kind to say born. <laughs> had, had Ghana been colonized by the British, by yes. Arabs. Okay, okay, yeah, by the Arabs, yeah. Okay. It will have been inshallah. <laughs> mm. Okay, it was colonized by the British. Praise the Lord. So in Zimbabwe, it was the British. So praise the Lord. So we are a Christian Christians. nation. Egypt, Sudan, Muslim. East and South was Muslims. So are we saying that religion is spirituality or religion is colonization? Okay, let's make it even more weird. Had we been colonized by the Chinese, we would have been Buddhists. We would be Buddhists. So now you're back to number one where we started. That can you become Buddhist? Can you become Christian? Can you become Muslim? Or it's simply political exposure, which then becomes a religious expectation that the God of the master becomes superior to his, to his servants. Mm. So the God of the boss becomes the God of the slaves. So are we saying that <laughs> we are Christians or we are Muslims? Or we must say we were colonized by. And what the boss believes in is what I believe in. But the question is, who are you? Do you know? So yourself? you are not Christian. He is not Muslim. He was just exposed to the Muslims community. Had you switched mothers and fathers, it would have been different. Yeah. You are the one who have been saying, Inshallah, Inshallah, and he have been saying, Praise the Lord. So what? What's the difference? But the important thing, you are friends. <laughs> and when you are eating together, you eat as friends. Yes, yes. If right now it gets cold. Does it get cold on the Muslim more than it gets cold on, on the Christian? No. What's the difference? We live together in harmony. Beyond religion is humanity. And in that humanity is the spirituality, which I am trying to advocate that. Look beyond, beyond. religion. Look at human beings that are alive. And look at them as creations that are similar to yourself. Whatever the name of your God is. <laughs> Ghana. Mm. A pastor can just stand up one day and be like... Um, I prophesied for this man to be president. Mm. And I was like, okay, so what happened to those who went in line to vote? So it's like, they think he became the president because of some spiritual prophecy. Mm. So I'm still asking. In the Bible, mm. they say, God chose kings and queens and whatever. So now, they are applying this in our current situation. Mm. That you can never be president in Ghana unless somebody prophesied to you so yeah. it's become a norm every Saturday, every December mm. they start I went to the spiritual realm where God said da, 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 and so this man must be present the other person said God da, 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 this one must so I'm like okay the same God mm. giving different prophecies goes going to MPP the other one say going to NDC so which kind of God are you guys talking mm. about so I'm asking does prophecy have anything to do with this um political thing Currently, let's just be, be, be lateral thinkers. So this December, I don't want to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I want you to go this December, okay, and get all the prophecies, okay, that are going to be coming in mm -hmm. as to who will be what, who will be what. Who okay, will. we bring all those prophecies together mm -hmm. in January, and then we wait, and then we will consolidate. Okay, and then at the end of the year we can see who was lying. And who was, <laughs> <laughs> was saying that? Because well, what you are saying is very fundamental. I'm sorry to be so, to, to take it lightly. But if you can tell me that 200 pastors, all of them start talking like that, only one of them is right. Whether he's right because he's right or he's right because he's the chief, he also it, it was a lottery. <laughs> took a chance. It was a lottery, lottery comment. You know, so we cannot convert prophecy into those lottery uh, kind of commentary. And I think um, they are using a, a beautiful biblical principle, but abusing it mm. for the, for their own benefit. And uh, the history of those prophets that are saying those things must also be traced to say, have they done it in the past? Has it been correct? Because the Bible says the prophet can only be confirmed by the words that he has said. And God follows up. Yahweh follows up. The Lord follows up. Elohim follows the word of his servant. Like Elijah meets up with Ahab and says, you will not reign for three years until I speak again. Not until God speaks. 
until I speak. By in this our era, I just wanted to know. And this then one. in this God, era, I want to know this. And God does God, then, does God chose president in this current? The question is: Has has the political system ever been blessed by God? It is the it is the Israelites who said we also want the prof- we also want the president. Mm-hmm. We also want the king. Mm-hmm. Like the other nations have mm-hmm. kings. And the whole colonial system as we have it right now, which has grown itself into the political space, into the governments that we have, are we saying God is with us in these political systems or God is managing us in this poli- or he's tolerating us? And so what is the difference between a government and the kingdom of God? What, how, how can we be talking politics when the Bible is talking kingdom? Kingdom. So you you may want for the younger viewers. I don't want to go too much there. I will suffocate you. Please go and look for the works of Miles Monroe mm-hmm. when he was dealing about the difference between a kingdom and the parliament and how do we build the kingdom and what is a kingdom? What are the fundamentals of a kingdom? So all political parties and all governments, all governments, are crime sins. Where they're collecting taxes on land that doesn't belong to them and abusing people that don't belong to them. The land belongs to the kings and belongs to the people. And indigenous governance systems have been undermined for colonial political systems. So I would want to submit that uh, the universe is tolerating the political system. But the political system is pushing us towards the matrix. That's when we'll know the beast that we've been tolerating all along. That the universe has never been in this COVID gave us a small little introduction, just a small little pinch on the bum, mm-hmm. just a small one. Just to tell you that your governments are useless, mm-hmm. your churches are useless, your money is useless, and there is a bigger hand in the wicked world controlling <laughs> that is running this, and our governments are actually in that pool. So are we, as Africans, are we as spiritual people, are we as Christians, going to be clapping our hands and putting fire on the pot that is cooking us. <laughs> At the end of the day, who will be cooked? Us. So maybe we need just maybe to step back a little bit. I think our obsession and excitement with these prophecies and governments and power and money and contracts and the benefits of having prophesied over someone to get into power, then you are known, you are the prophet of so and so. You are the spiritual father of uh, this political leader and the benefits that come with that has overshadowed our our sense of kingdom building. And it's, it's unfortunate that we are promoting a, and feeding a tiger and a snake mm-hmm. that will only come back and have us for breakfast. Has religion helped develop Africa? Yes and no. To an extent of opening schools and... But I could say yes. But when you look at the quality of knowledge that we have received... Is it the knowledge that has made us better people, respect God better? No. It has come in with a double-edged sword. Because at the end of our graduation, we have not become better spiritually. We have not become better materially. How many graduates are walking the streets unemployed? So we look at religion and say, has it done anything? Has it built a few hospitals? But again, they've been used as abortion centers. <laughs> the, the same hospitals again are vaccinating our children with colonial medications and etc. So it, 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 it's difficult for me to answer that question because it comes with sweet and, and bitter. It's, it's sweet and sour. It's a hot tea and you mm-hmm. put chilies in it. And when I put it on my lips, I don't know whether I'm burning from the heat or I'm burning from the chilies. So yes, yes and no. Yes, they've helped us to build. But what have they built? What have they preserved? What have they destroyed? What have they... It leaves a sweet and sour taste in my mouth. And and, and had, had they... And what have they done? They've brought us foreign holidays. They've brought us different names. They've made us into celibacy. They've uh, made, taken our women and made them nuns. Oh, and they've brought in new idols. They've, <laughs> so have they done anything good? Maybe yes. But I think that uh, religion, particularly Christianity, has actually come in as a concubine of colonialists and they have been massaging us not to cry too much when the political system was beating us this side. Then you go to church and be told, no, it'll be okay. God loves you and uh, 
is coming very soon to take you home. And mm. the troubles and sorrows would linger for a while. Mm -hmm. Joy will come in the morning. And you know, so it has been a pacifier. Had there been no religion, the African would have killed the white man by now. And <laughs> the, the religion has managed our consciences not to revenge. No, revenge belongs to the Lord. And then members sit back in. Oh, it's, it's in the hands of the Lord. But if you remove the Lord from this, hence I always say in a sarcastic way that if there's any group of people that needed to be Christians, they're white people. Mm -hmm. Because it is because of this religion that actually <laughs> they have been alive, particularly on the African continent. Just imagine had there been no religion, particularly Christianity. <laughs> Would have been war. A man who rapes your mother, mm -hmm. your father, takes your land, kills you, and burns you. In the same church, worshiping together. Mm -hmm. And you remove that you remove that Jesus from the picture. And you see white men who are busy saying, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in you better believe in you better believe in the Bible. Because it helps as a you. white man. It's helping you too much. It's actually even up to now. That's what's keeping you alive. If I should start a church right now and, and say there is no Bible, there is no Jesus, and there is no God, we must stand up in revenge. Africa will be on fire. The white men will jump back in the boats by sunset. <laughs> Blood will flow on the streets and you look for me. It's because of religion that the consciences of the Africans is being managed. And the pastors are the ones who are distributing the tablets <laughs> of managing the anger. You know, focus on... Don't focus on physical things. Focus on the hell. Focus on the things of God. Oh God. <laughs> See what Maponga is saying? Mm -hmm. He's speaking in the flesh. Mm -hmm. We are speaking in the spirit. You won't understand what... Like, really? I, I know this trash from the physical to the spiritual. In one sentence, religion is managing the anger of the Africans. And without religion, we will be sitting in a genocide. Some pastors, some traditionalists, whoever, is just saying, your mother is a witch. And because of that, their, their kids or children have neglected them. Mm. What do you have to say about neglecting your parents? Uh, I think it's an insult to the spiritual realm to curse the door through which you have been allowed to come into this existence. It cannot be right that hatred and anger, suspicion, can be used to relegate people to those camps where then you excommunicate yourself from your parents. I would not find anything better to tell you except Matthew chapter 1, which says, oh, Here is Yaswa, the son of Joseph, the son of Boaz, the son of Ruth, the son of David, the son of Rahab. The son. I mean, you look at that biography and look at prostitutes, <laughs> adulterers, thugs, criminals, <laughs> all being included on the genealogy of the Savior. If this is the genealogy of the Savior, what makes you think that your genealogy could be anything better than that? So whether a mother is a witch, is an adulterer, is a prostitute, is a thug, but no man, for the love of God and for the peace of mankind. If you want to curse yourself, hmm. curse the door through which the universe has allowed you to come into existence. Respect those doors. It's beyond you. It's not for you to judge that you should lift up your hand and strike your mother because people say she's a witch. Love her. Look after her. Respect your doors. Honor. Honor your father and your mother. And your days, Exodus 20, will be many that I will give you while you live on earth. The only commandment with an insurance policy. <laughs> and your days <laughs> will be Many. So there are many people who have gone to the graveyard much earlier mm. because they did not respect honor. and honor 
I can't say much about that. I hope the spirit of the universe will interpret this to the, to the hearts of those who think that it is their earthly duty to walk around looking for witches. <laughs> <laughs> and it will only feel bad when one day you are also accused of being a witch mm -hmm. then you will understand but many does not wish them bad but take this insurance policy in Exodus 20 and make it part of your template before you do anything stupid and silly the one who wrote this book if he is truthful his word cannot lie and to bridge what is on the text you will cut your life short this is very deep the last one. Um, I want to ask this question on choosing somebody as your spiritual father. What is your take? Taking somebody as your spiritual father. Mm. The problem of taking someone as a spiritual father, we need first of all to justify that concept biblically. Is it something that we find regularly happening in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I rather have a beautiful concept that I've said, I've, I have always share where I say, um, don't learn my, my words, but learn my ways and my words will come to you. The beautiful illustration is that of Elisha and Elijah, where it's not about spiritual fatherhood, but mentorship. I think there's a big difference between the two. And I'm, I'm saying so because I understand the modern model. And I also understand the biblical model. The biblical model of uh, mentorship meant that a man walked to learn the ways of the one that is ahead. And Elisha, in return, opened the school of the prophets. Now, that's complicated. Because how do you train prophets? Yet they've already they are already prophets. Mm -hmm. It means that you have to train them how to handle their ministry. God has already, Yahweh has already appointed them. You're a prophet. But for you to learn how to run your prophetic ministry, then you come to school. So it's not like you you study to graduate. <laughs> you are already appointed mm -hmm. by God. Then you come to learn how to manage what God has already blessed you with. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, therefore, there is a great respect between Elisha and his students. Mm -hmm. There's no imposition. <laughs> I already know that this one who has come in is not coming from me. Mm -hmm. He's coming from the boss. <laughs> okay. He's already an appointed prophet. He just need management. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing him the ropes. As it were... This is how to run it. But this modern concept where it is me who identifies. It is me who ordains. Now it's me who supervises. It is me who appoints where you must go. And it's you who must now return tithe to me to show allegiance. Because it's, it's me who made you. It, 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 the system itself has lots of loopholes and subject to abuse in a thousand ways more than one. And so the modern model cannot work. The proper model, if these ministers were truthful, could be the Elijah model, Elijah model, or the Yaswa model, the Jesus model, where he set up the disciples and he dies and he goes. And each disciple remained doing ministry the way he had understood the ministry to be. Matthew, Peter, James, John, Thomas. Who amongst them can come back and say, who was the spiritual father of Peter? Who was the spiritual father of Paul? <laughs> who was the spiritual father? <laughs> so, I know this thing sounds popular in the modern terminology, but it's poor theology. I think it's popular sentiments, poor theology. It has not been well toothpicked to represent exactly what they want to say. I would rather have a mentorship program where people must learn my ways and my words will come to you rather than memorize my words and you'll understand my ways. Please, your last words. 
My last word is Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the doors will be opened unto you. And the word that is used there is ask. Is A, S, K. Therefore, in asking, we are seeking. In seeking, we are knocking. The three types of Christians you would find. The A-level Christians who think that you must just ask. The S-level Christians who have stopped just asking <laughs> and they've started seeking for what they are asking for. But the highest level is the K-level who have started going on doors <laughs> knocking. and knocking. And that which they are looking for is behind the doors. But we read this passage from there coming this way that God is the one who is behind the door and we are this way. So we must always be asking from God and God must give us. We are always seeking from God and God must be helping us to find. And we are always knocking on the door of heaven and God must open the door. But I want to change the passage around. So since when you are asking, you want God to give you. When God asks, do you give him? Since you are always seeking and you must find, when he is seeking for kindness, goodness, and mercy, and patience, does he find it? Since when you want to knock on heaven's door and God must open, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. When God opens, do you, do you open the door for him? For this is the summary of the law and the prophet. That is about relationships. Do unto others as you want others do unto you. According to my theology, do unto God what you want God to do unto you. Yes, um, Joshua Mapunga. And I hope you enjoyed this program. Share with your friends. Bring your thoughts. Any question you want to ask, just put it in the comment sections. We'll get back to you. They must write questions next time. Yeah, yeah. What they want us to attend, you know. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, that's the request. Said, just bring up your questions. Whenever he comes on this program, then I can just mm. ask yeah. uh, Joshua Mapunga for you what you want him to answer for you. Thank you, Father, for coming. Hello, Ebusiafo. So, Persifita Asracho, Dofo, dear. And they're not for Unko Dom is unique laser whitening. Unique laser whitening. I will toothpaste to strong kwa. What did you choose? Say, I'm a see a year fita. Na a year fita non suno. Na a ye and cow bunny beer a woo no mu beer. Any tea stain, coffee stain, smoking stain, si beer. Unique laser whitening product. A beginning in every swamma or kama kama kama. The other one is a utu so. Na udi beer go. O brush it so. Na udi a chuchu sinisuni na kama. Uvia and who were no general were no sa into for a unique laser whitening. I was zero seven nine 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 seven nine two three three zero. Unique laser whitening or say Muni Sesso. Penny for the Bibro, we are sent in here, da, near Tupuno, Nani Paponi Fonti, and what's so more bumble who here? Nani Papamudi, Pro Technologies, and I make up for my Ani Pro. Technologies. We are specialized in both sales and installation of CCTV cameras. Yet on SI install CCTV cameras in the sour gun and NASA brochure. Now if you gun, now pursue a CCTV camera installation. We need pro technologies and in sour so we CCTV camera installation, electric fence, automated gate, access control, video doorbell, and our intercom, and our satellite TV, home theater, so we pay biato, and our to and our perceber install them out. Pro technologies and our self fry. Fidia ni name from America but you may send Papa now Padia Man Yene Nani Bwan Su Daf form. Make sure you know the web brooch memo ha any a branch a wagana. Yeni more bra will bring and to seek a fire and sem see if any padema wagana or da da nani tennis yes general construction. So web brooch no peso si fi or gana a day plan be up so si so a shall see that and now fit no peso si plant beer ye be see em and let you so here solar power and now bamba once and send the idea when you need so square first install it and now the settings ye be ye at the amount oh gana ube hu yeng well mirror front enter edward yeche dodoa ube hu ye ewo ashi ye ni emaline pharmacy and what the same building for information or what's up 401 75
0300 and a plus 401-6992254. Pro Technologies, we have the solutions for your security and home entertainment needs at affordable prices. 